Thank you for having me. Um, let's get to the first slide. So when I started my company in 2006, um, I had a thought that, in you know, a thesis, a hypothesis, that aesthetics was really meant to be a conversation. Aesthetics was less about the procedure, it was more about how people thought about these different topics, considerations, and changes they were con contemplating. And today I want to talk about who's the real influencer, and I'm still going to focus back talking about them, which I really think it's about the patient. I think it's about the people who are having experiences and talking about them. And we'll talk about how that shows up in Instagram and other places. Does anybody recognize this photo beside you? <laughs> this is the first photo ever taken on Instagram. This is in 2010 by the founder. And, and I liked it be, because of just the raw authenticity of it. It's not at all showing up with us influencers and the, the sparkly background and all that. It's some guy's foot and his dog. And, and that's really the, the roots of where Instagram began. And you would say today, if you look at the advance of influencers and the number of times that word is going to be used today, it's really changed and transformed. But there's a lot of signs that it's this pendulum is swinging back. The pendulum is swinging back because people are, particularly the young generation, is starting to see through the fakery, the, 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 the staging. They, the rawness of it is, is missing because things like the Fire Festival, which is a great documentary, just show and demonstrate how little you can trust what is called an influencer, how um, staged these things are. And there was a great article in The Atlantic this past month that really talks about the entire aesthetic of Instagram is sort of no longer cool. You know, having the, the background with the flowers and the, the, you know, the, the beautiful sheen and so forth and the filters. Um, in fact, the most popular app right now for photos is one that makes your photos basically look like they're from 1984 with a snap camera that you got from a drugstore that you got developed. And the reason for that is in that flight to authenticity is because I think ultimately people use these platforms to get informed. They use them to get information. They're kind of at this place where they want to see real things, real results, real, real people. Social media and Instagram has definitive, definitively showed up in our category, our industry, in weird ways. And, and, you know, there's some grappling with it. There's a lot of fakery, and this is an example of a complete fake um, basis of an account. And you see this where doctors say, well, should I sign for these things? And it's like, well, no, you should not, because it's all based on purchasing and, and manufacturing. And we're grappling with it, too, with the fact, you know, I'll show a video of, like, how it should be utilized. And many surgeons and, and industry people are sort of saying, well, is this the best representation? And this, I hate to pick on one doctor. But Good morning, everyone. My name is Jess. They call me Jess. And Dr. Sajan, what, wait, what, what is that? What are you eating? It's a microwave, low carb bar. It's like a brownie. I don't think that's a normal meal. Why not? It's on a plate, I got a fork. Okay, and what are we gonna do today besides eat well, strange it's meals? Tuesday. And we're going to do surgery. Yes, we are. So I think we're all struggling with, about what, where we land with social media, what influences consumers, how it should be utilized appropriately and properly. One of the challenges, I think, ultimately, in the framing of how the, in, this industry and aesthetics um, and our, our, our route, roots and foundation sit inside of the before and after. When, where it's designed to show amazing results. It's designed to give you a clear indication of what can happen and perfection and the best. And I loved hearing from New Beauty earlier that they're trying to show a range of possible outcomes as opposed to just the perfect. The problem with before and after images and the foundational nature of that in this industry is that they're just not trusted increasingly less trusted. Our own data shows that consumers don't trust them, but younger generations trust them even less. And why is that? You ask people, well, why don't you trust these images? And they say, well, they can be manipulated. They're cherry picking. All the things that could be expected. Very smart people are thinking these. Ultimately, we're not selling bottled water. We're in a very, you know, position of social responsibility because ultimately a person is trying to make a life-changing decision with one of your procedures, one of your technologies. And at Real Self, we are consistently focused on how do we help a person make a confident decision? 
ultimately whether they do it or not do it, but they should have all the information transparency around something that's big, that's important in their life. So ultimately, the biggest influencer in our category, the most important thing is capturing authentic conversations. How do we enable them to happen more often, more frequently? Because these will be the key to drive growth because they'll drive confidence. They'll encourage people to move forward. So when we look at our own Instagram instance at Real Self, we see that the stories that work the most effectively are ones that show the attainable, the real, we, the close-ups, the bruises. This is the highest performing post we've ever had in, in Instagram stories. We had 300% above average impressions, 350% for clicks, 50% for click rate. We get about a 10% click on our link from the top of our BIOS, which is a pretty good conversion rate to our doctor finder. But you see that ultimately we're trying to show people really what these things results what the results look like and what you can end up with and this rawness and authenticity and not perfect perfect settings and professional cameras works it resonates it's it's that goes back to that roots of instagram and the authenticity that it started with this isn't just in our category it's coming in all sorts of places where the attainable is something that women are attracted to airy is a, a brand that is embracing that women come in different body shapes. They don't look like Victoria's Secret models. And the Victoria's Secret model is actually in great stress and duress because it's meant to stand for perfection. We're in a world that doesn't want to be based on perfection, it wants to be based on real. Ultimately, I have some tips I can give you are from my own findings. We had the Real House of Modern Beauty, which was a, a South by Southwest, where we brought in eight brands from many in this room, where we just wanted to get in front of consumers, in front of women who are very digitally savvy, and we hold panels. And we hired an influencer named Skinny Confidential. Actually, her real name's Lauren. But um, what was remarkable for me, and, and maybe this is a sign of my age and my lack of like, diving into all the social media nature, of, of my own personal accounts, not that active, is that when she was introduced, the entire place erupted. I'm telling you, it was like nothing I've ever seen before. The women in the room were so, or the, in, the, in the location were so excited because she talks authentically. And you know, here are some of the, we got over 300 DMs from when we announced that she was gonna be at our event. And if you look at some of these comments, they're not just like, yeah, sign me up, I'd like to be there. But people are like, this would change my life. And why is that? Because she's so authentic and so somebody who's so relatable and somebody who has followings and conversations about aesthetics in places like um, private groups on Facebook, not just in Instagram. But, you know, the skinny, white, beautiful influencer is someone that we have to get past. This is data from our own research or our own, our own actual, you know, delivery of leads to doctors and inquiries and what the, the, the makeup of that audience is. And you'll see it's just 50% are Caucasians. When we did a study recently looking at plastic surgeons' websites, 90% of the photos are Caucasian females. So that largely underrepresented are women of color, skin of color, and it's an opportunity for you to also embrace that with who you choose to be as an influencer in any of your campaigns. One of the things that Dr. Stevens has been spearheading with, um, with ASAPs, and I'm, I'm, I'm particularly excited about announcing tomorrow, is that because we host so many real conversations, since we can reach consumers in such a meaningful way, um, ASAPs has partnered with us to bring forward safety information around breast implants, um, Brazilian butt lift, which you heard about earlier, and I want to thank Dr. Stevens for, for that effort because I think it's going to be really exciting to work together. Ultimately, let's just keep it real that the conversations that are happening on Instagram aren't the end all be all. Authentic conversations are happening in all forms and fashion around all sorts of mediums. So I just encourage you to keep embracing that authenticity in all of your marketing and efforts and look for opportunities to engage the patient in her storytelling. So thank you so much. <laughs>